please do note when I make a top five list that it may be different from what you say should be on this list. If you have anything that you think that I forgot to put on this list, please put it down in the comments down below and thank you very much. Now then, on to the list. Ah, anime. Sometimes you can make something that is so amazing, so spectacular, so jaw-droppingly beautiful. But then sometimes you make something that needs to be thrown in the trash. Whether it can be a whole entire anime series itself, an anime arc, or in general, fillers that everyone hates, it can be put into that trash category over there. Uh, but however, just like art, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and today, I'm kind of recognizing that a bit. Welcome to Night's Gaming League Top 5 Anime Guilty Pleasures. Alright, kicking off the number 5 spot on this list is Anime Filler Works. Now then, for those of you who don't want spoilers, please do mute this until number 4. I repeat, mute this until number 4 if you don't want spoilers. You've been warned. Now then, <laughs> Anime Filler Works. Love or hate them, they do have their importance. But however, here's how I shall explain them. I like my anime filler arcs when they don't interrupt a manga. Say you have a hamburger, right? And this is where I like my lettuce, at the bottom of the meat. I want my main juicy good arc to be over with before I have to go with the stale blandness of the filler. I like my filler at the very bottom and at the end of it. But then, in Bleach, for about some of the Aronkara fights after Grim Jow and Ichigo fight, I know there's a filler there. Um, they start another filler arc, and that annoys me. Is that when they don't resolve the conflict that I am curious about of a current war going on, they decide, oh hey, let's throw this nice piece of lettuce in between the meat. I mean, why? No, don't do that. It just makes it worse. Ugh. That's one of the things that mostly annoyed me about Bleach, and that's kind of why I would say fillers are situational. You do need them to work properly. You need them to be kind of a break between conflicts and arcs. You don't need them wedged into the middle of an arc, where they become an annoyance and they... <laughs> now then, one thing filler arcs are useful for is separating the anime and manga, as into two separate beings, where now the anime will have its own little storyline that is anime exclusive. However, I can see this for you manga purists out there, it does get annoying when the anime ends on a completely anime only, only ending. That can be kind of uh, questionable. Now then, let's say an anime and manga are neck and neck, to the point where the manga is just barely ahead of the anime. Now then, there are four options, and all of them are used for the manga to keep on going with its plot. One, season break until the manga is, like, superiorly ahead of the anime. Two, anime-only ending. Three, a drastic slowdown of the anime pacing, like they did in Dragon Ball Z. You know, Frieza's big five minutes that was over eight episodes long. And four, filler arcs. Now then, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like season breaks because I don't like my show just stopping for a while and then I lose interest in it over time. And then I get hyped up when it comes back. I don't like anime-only endings that much. I do think they're neat sometimes. And slowing down the pacing kind of makes me lose interest in it. So I think I prefer a filler arc over all the other three options. And for number four, what else could I put this to but... The Great Saiyan Arc! Of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> you please calm down I saw that Jerry don't think I didn't see that uh, give me a minute I gotta clean this up
Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, the Great Saiyan arc. This arc for me was my favorite arc out of the Dragon Ball Z franchise. Hey, Melinda, put that pitchfork down. No. And the reason for that being was mainly we got away from the main cast of characters. I mean, we didn't see Piccolo too often. I know for some of you that's a downer. But we got to see more characters than what we usually saw. I mean, in the earlier episodes of Dragon Ball, you could basically sum it up with the main amount of people who were always there. They were the main cast in general, and it would rotate between them. But with the Great Saiyan arc, we just followed around Gohan for a little bit, and we got to see some new characters. We got to see what it would be like if the world had a Super Saiyan, and they didn't know that he was an alien from another planet, and it was just like a Superman scenario, alright? It was nice, it was interesting, and overall goofy. It makes me laugh at certain points, and... <laughs> Honestly, that arc was fun in general. I mean, we had in, we had a basic threat of the episode, but they weren't like, save the world from this sort of alien or save the universe from this threat. No, it was, our town's in danger and we just need some minor help here. And usually the conflict would be resolved with little to no struggle. The only struggle was Gohan mostly keeping his identity a secret. And that was about it, actually. That was... <laughs> One thing I really want to see happen is an alternate universe saga where the events of Majin Buu don't happen during the torment, and the whole entire thing plays out normally. You know, we get to see a non-Super Saiyan Goku and a non-Super Saiyan Vegeta go at it for a while. We get to see Vige Videl go up against whoever, and maybe, hopefully, go up against Gohan. Kind of want to see that fight. Um, figure out who's going to rat out Trunks and go to him for beating, being Mighty Mask still, and... Who gets to face Hercule? Because I see Gohan possibly giving in or winning the tournament. I see Goku, either or both of them, you know, father-son kind of mentality. And I see Vegeta just taking Hercule and just punching him straight to the moon. <laughs> then maybe have everything else go back to a few more episodes of Great Saiyan. And then work it into so that the Majin Buu event trigger is in a Great Saiyan saving the day thing. Instead of, you know, having the trigger be at the World Tournament. A bit coincidental, wouldn't you say? Oh, hello there. Um, before I put down number three, can you do something for me for one eensy beatsy teensy little minute? Um, just take a step back. Okay, good, good. You're, you're getting there. Just take another step back. And another. Another good, all right, uh, right there, right there. All right, now just let me pull down a little bit of a curtain here. Okay, just to be clear, I hate SAO from a story standpoint, and it, it's confusing in general to me. I mean, you think this would be an action-adventure anime, but no, somehow the main character turns the whole entire anime into a harem. And I like harem animes, but when they only make it obvious from the beginning, this is going to be a harem. However, this, it, it, it let me down the false passage just to say it clearly. It, I feel so bad for that. And then there's the plot holes that can't be ignored. For one, how did the nerve gear get approved to be sold in general if it had that dangerous of an item in it? Not laying alone, if it get, did get by that, then why didn't they use an EMP? I mean... EMPs are specifically made for the kind of reasons that the nerve gear was going to kill someone for. If you used an EMP on it, 
the people using the nerve gear would be alive in general. I mean, how do you... It makes no sense. Ah, my brain's hurting now. However, if you're like me and hate SAO from that standpoint, there are a few things I think you guys and me can agree on. One, the visuals are nice, especially for the time that this was brought out. I mean, it's not Gurren Lagann levels of good, but they are pretty and make you go, ah, that's so beautiful. Two, this anime can be AMV the hell out of. You can get it some good, awesome fight music to go with a lot of the fight scenes. You can have emotional sort of, what have I done, what do I do, montages with a lot of the scenes in there. You can do a few romance musics in there with Kirito and Asuna, and it would still look somewhat nice from that standpoint as well. And three, the abridged series makes you hate it a little bit less, because if it weren't for this, then we wouldn't have something that funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kirito, you and your insanity, how do you help me out with this? For number two, we have Chibi Anime Parodies! Now then, one of the things that make regular anime parodies for me that is so great is that you can change the personalities of some characters and you can, or tweak them just a little itsy bitsy bit. Because of how the mouth flap works, you can also change the voice lines that they use, and you can also make the series part comedy, but yet keep it on the same general plot line as the regular anime. Now then, with chibi anime parodies, you can essentially throw the plot out the window because there's basically is none. The only first episode that you'll have of it is the first episode, literally. Everything else, you can you can sink it all out of timeline. You don't need to have a timeline structure or a plot. You just need to have the opening episode, and then you can throw everything else out there like a ball of crap. And it gets hilarious. With chibi anime parodies, you can change everything. You can change the scenery from an Attack on Titan like they have behind the wall where it's gloomy and depressing. You can change that to a high school where they interact and yet they're still behind a wall. But it's funny because the Titans don't eat people. They now just eat your lunch. They're the bullies that come up to you and go, hey, give me your lunch. Now then, you can do what they did in Naruto SD instead of what they did in the Attack on Titan parody, where you can change the main character from the normal main character to one of the other characters in the show. They changed it from Naruto to Lee, and this works out in a way that is kind of pretty ridiculous, because now he's like the most dangerous person of the Leaf. And you can come up with a lot of different hilarious scenarios as long as he's in there. And it gets to the point of what, where you're like, just, why? Why this? I mean, just imagine if they did that with the Attack on Titan parody, where not only did they change the scenery, but the main character was now Gene. Number one. Fillers. Now then, before anyone can say anything about fillers, I'll say this. Yes, they are annoying, especially when they pop up in the middle of a thing that doesn't make sense. Flashbacks, I can somewhat forgive to a degree, but when it just pops up in the middle of two action-based episodes, then you're just like, Why? Please, no, 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 no! I can also see it from a point of the animation team needing time to just maybe get a little bit of it away from the main enormous arc that they're doing. Like, take the Naruto Ninja War arc and the Bleach Espada arc that they had. I mean, that those two arcs in general are just long, and probably just working on them straight week after week might be quite a bit tiring. So I could see the reason for just having maybe a strain of filler episodes in between them, just so that the creative team has something else to work with, so that they're not stuck doing one thing repetitive on the same thing and never feeling like it's going to end. Having a small filler arc gives them something that they can achieve in a week's timeline to at least feel like they've completed something and not feel like they're still working on a massive project. 
because have you ever felt that when you're working on a project for so long and so long and so long, you don't think it's ever going to get finished? Um, this is the point where some people will actually go along and do a little bit of a side project that doesn't take too long, but isn't too massively short either, get that done, and then they start going back to the regular work because they just need some time to not only get out of the situation of what they're in, but take some time to take it all in as well, look at what's going on. However, I can also see it from a point where the anime and manga are like really close, but the manga's maybe an arc ahead or so, so the animation crew goes like, hey, how about we make a few filler episodes so that we can transition from this arc to the next arc, giving us a bit more time to cool down from the last arc and giving the manga a bit more time to get ahead of us. Now then, I hear some of you asking this, uh, aren't filler and filler arcs generally the same thing? Why are they on the list at two separate spots? I'll tell you why. Filler arcs take a lot more time than regular filler episodes. Filler arcs can generally take days of people being together, gain a storyboard all together, transferring the main theme of the show. If there's a lot of drama, action, and suspense into it, they can take having to design new characters that are only for that filler arc and have to be somehow gotten rid of by the end of that filler arc. I mean, filler arcs take a lot more work than a regular filler episode, where you can essentially, if you want a filler that connects for about five or six episodes, all you need is like a group of them, maybe staying around, for less than a day, or at most, a day or so. That's about it. That's all it would probably take for a few filler episodes to connect. And regular filler where it's just all comedy in general, yeah, that I don't think that takes more than a day. Definitely not more than a day. Anyway, the one main thing that I like about filler is that it's basically a ball of Play-Doh that the animation team can toy around with. And it kind of shows you the creativeness of some of the situations they do. I mean, how many people will think of a situation that happens in filler? How many of you will think of that ever happening? And that's the one thing I like about fillers is that generally you don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get something either that's going to be comedy based, you're going to get something that's action based. Maybe you'll get a whole horror mystery theme based, or maybe you'll just get a nice relaxing episode and it kind of takes it away from the seriousness of the episode. The only part of time I really hate fillers is when it's like right in the middle of an arc, unless it makes a little bit of sense. If they have a way of making it sense, such as a flashback or a way to explain a character's backstory a bit more, then I won't mind that as much. Hey guys, Ice here. I just want to say something really quickly. One, I'm doing a little bit of a poll on my anime overall page where I just want to see which game would you guys rather see for Game of the Month. Now the note, all three of these games have caught my eyes. However, I have a bit of that thing where I cannot decide between which of these three do I want to showcase. Anyway, please do follow me on all the social media links below as well. This has been Ice Knight, signing out.